Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. Now, Ryzen 5000 is out there, but the thing that is not talked about too much is the Ryzen 4000 series processors. And you're like, wait a second, I didn't know these existed, but there you go, they do. Here are three of the 4000 series Ryzen processors. Look, there's even a sticker that says 4000 series. Ryzen 3, 5, and 7. Now, this is a three-part video, basically, so check out the Ryzen 3 review. Today, we're gonna look at the Ryzen 5 review which is a six core processor and how does it compare to the very famous ryzen 3600 and 3600x is it worth getting this over them what is this processor about and why can't you buy it let's talk about it have you ever lost any important files like documents photos or videos and you wish you were able to recover them wondershare recovered software does exactly that it can recover and reconstruct over 200 plus types of files and folders it supports various types of storage devices like usb flash drives memory cards sd cards internal and external drives computers and many more the program is both windows and mac compatible and recovering files is very easy all you have to do is launch the program select the storage device or location you'd like to be scanned for recovery let the program do its magic and then choose the destination you want your recovered files saved simple as that check out wondershare recover it in the video description below Also want to say a big thanks for uh, Team Group for sending out some awesome looking RAM for me to do this test and doing the test bench setup and all that. So if you haven't seen that video, check that out. It's linked up there. And I'll also leave these RAM sticks in the description below because they are just fantastic. I'm a big fan of just no RGB, just black stealth looking RAM. And this is another one of them. Just look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. And let's not go any further. This is 3600 megahertz as well. So talking about the specs over here. So this is basically Renoir processor or Renoir APU. And that's like the name of the process line. It's based on the Zen 2 architecture, which is basically Ryzen 3000 series processors and the seven nanometer transistor sizes. And uh, not the 12 nanometer, which is the 3400G processor. This is like the first time AMD, I think, has a six core APU in the lineup. Obviously, there's been previously on the laptop, but desktop processors is what we're talking about. This is not a mainstream processor. You can't buy this off the shelf. It doesn't come in a retail package, like I mentioned in the previous video. It just comes in a random looking box and just the processor taped on it. Keep going on the specs. So six cores, 12 threads. We have a 3.7 gigahertz uh, base speed and a 4.2 gigahertz boost clock. Integrated graphics that's built into this processor is called Vega 7, Radeon Vega 7 processor. There is a seven GPU cores and they're running at 1900 megahertz. The cache of this processor is eight megabytes and eight megabytes only, which is very, very low. We have a PCIe generation 3.0 and only 12 PCIe lanes. Memory type is DDR4. Maximum RAM you can install is 64 gigabytes. And the maximum supported RAM by the manufacturer is 3200 megahertz. But that doesn't mean that high frequency RAM doesn't work with it. I tested with 3600 megahertz and it was completely fine. I am not sure about the ECC support because some sites say one, one thing, some say other thing. So that's random. Now the TDP is 65 watts. On my testing, I can see up to 79 watts being pulled from the processor. But if you're wondering, uh, is the included cooling enough for this processor? Absolutely. Because I know that the 3600 and the 3600X can run a little bit hot with the included cooler, but these ones, no. These are absolutely fantastic, honestly. On an extended test of like temperatures, we can see like maximum temps of maybe 60 degrees Celsius, maybe 62. So I wouldn't worry about the temps at all. The benchmarks. Now, first of all, we're going to look at Cinebench R20 benchmarks. And here you can see a few different processes on the line. So we're looking something from the previous generation. 2600X, which is a six core. We're looking at 3600, which is another six core processor, but third gen Ryzen. And then we have a Ryzen 3600X processor. And then we have a Mac Pro eight core processor there as well, just for reference. So as you can see, our Ryzen 5 4650G over here, the six core processor is better and multi-core than our, the previous generation Ryzen, or actually two generations Ryzen 
runs 2600x which is quite a bit slower on the multi-core as well as on the single core but obviously it's a much cheaper processor but just seeing how far we've come then on the ryzen 3600 not the 3600x we are roughly in the same ballpark the multi-core performance is very very similar but our single core performance is a bit better which is interesting because basically what i think this processor is is a ryzen 3600 or 3600x kind of processor with some of the pci lanes stripped and lower cache on the processor and a gpu put in there as well obviously this is like an old uh, gpu it's not the rdna2 like kind of base gpu it is vega gpu which is not as good but the ryzen 3600x is now tuned a bit higher clock speeds and we can see that the multi-score is a bit better and the single core are both a bit better but the interesting thing is looking at the mac pro which is an eight core you know six thousand dollar base model processor or computer and the processors inside there which costs 720 pounds we can see that our multi-core is very very close to that performance and even though i don't have a single core performance over there i know that the single core is better on this one because the single core on the 12 core or 16 core whatever mac pro processors the xeon processor intel aren't very good on single core performance so our single core performance is much better our processor comes around 230 pounds which is more expensive than all of these processors i compare to but the big caveat for this process is that there is a graphics card built in and you don't need a dedicated graphics card now if you go for a dedicated graphics card you're going to be spending a few hundred pounds over there for probably 200 250 to get something decent what we're talking about like 1660 or 1650 or something like that the entry graphics card that you might buy to pair with like some of the processors obviously here like 3600 it's not going to give you so much of a better performance than than this one over here obviously dedicated gpu is much more powerful than this one but it's going to save you a bit of money because look there's only 50 pounds between the 3600 and this processor you can't get a dedicated gpu for 50 quid that's what i'm trying to say let's move on to geekbench 5 which is a bit more generic um, cpu kind of benchmarks and testing different things how does it work this process over here actually is better than 3600x 3600 and 2600x obviously on the geekbench 5 the Mac Pro isn't below this processor anymore. It's actually better. We should expect that from a 720 pounds processor. Our single core and multi core is both better than what I can see on the similar processors, which exactly proves the point that it's basically a 3600X or 3600 processor with a graphics card built in as well let's move on to more like the real world performance and how does it perform in some of the like workloads or let's say if you're a creator how does it work when you're using premiere pro you know can you just use this processor without a dedicated graphics card or not and the answer is yes you can so let's have a look so now we we know the ryzen 3 scores so our ryzen 5 over here plays back h.264 codec that's a 4k clip 10 bit 422 25 frames per second without any frames drop which is fantastic so that means that if you editing a footage from your like a mirrorless camera and it's h.264 h.265 is a little bit hard to decode or encode you'll be fine especially when you don't play back at the full resolution which i tested all of these clips with so now playing back black magic 6k raw which is a b-roll codec 24 frames per second we are dropping 0.6 frames and average which is basically zero as well. We're dropping like one frame here and there, which is fantastic, but we're playing back full resolution 6K footage. Then our two times 6K B-RAW, we are dropping 108, which is much less that compared to the Ryzen 3 4D 350G. And on the three times B-RAW, we are dropping 141 frames, which is still less than the Ryzen 3 4350G. Now moving on to the red footage, we can see that our processor on the red 4K clip, we're dropping 40 frames, which is three times less than our Ryzen 3, which is quite good. So I expect if, you, if you're playing like red 4K raw clips back, if you drop the quality to like maybe half or quarter of it, you shouldn't be dropping too much frames and you should be able to edit that 8k red raw with basically no difference uh, compared to the our ryzen 3 pro processor 145 compared to 144.6 basically the same so 
8K, this processor can't play back, so expect to make proxies. But now the interesting thing is, compared to the rendering times, exactly the same two minute clip that was rendered on the Ryzen 3, 4350G, rendering on this processor, which is has two more cores and what, four more threads? We managed to render the clip exactly the same time. And I did it a few times to check that these numbers are accurate, but that is true. These two processors, the Ryzen 3 and 5, over here, Ryzen 3 and 5, they did it exactly the same. How does that work? But apparently this this is what it is. Now, should you be buying this, if you can find one from eBay or somewhere, because wh where can you buy them? You can buy them from eBay. I can see this on sale on eBay, different sellers from different countries, and I'll probably be selling mine on eBay as well. So if you're from the UK, either message me or if you want to buy these processes like you can see them on eBay or Facebook market or something like that but I think it's very interesting we have this type of processor which has the Vega graphics I know the gamers will be happy because it's it's quite powerful you know you can play some games with this graphics card whereas like if you had Intel integrated graphics you can't really play any games with it it's more like for testing purposes but with this processor you can actually game which is very, very interesting. Again, who is this processor for? I think this processor is for people who want to get a small form factor build without the GPU or someone who needs to buy a processor that can actually kind of get you going without the dedicated C GPU and then later on adding the GPU. But in this case or this processor case, I think it's especially interesting because it basically performs similarly or identically to the Ryzen 3600X or Ryzen 3600, which means you're essentially getting this Ryzen 3600 or 3600X with a graphics card built in as well. Obviously, bear in mind, there's less cache and less PCIe lanes and maximum RAM is only 64 gigabytes, but that should be plenty for most people. So if you want to get yourself on a like a budget workstation system without spending like another few hundred to get a graphics card, why don't you get this CPU? I know it's hard to find, but that's how it works. Now you're probably wondering what type of motherboards does it work with? As far as I know, I think it should work with B550 and X570 boards. I know these two for sure work with it. I tested with an X570 board, but I don't think it works with B450. So just bear that, that in mind that B550 is probably like the minimum board you should be buying in order to get this processor working. Also, you might need another process to upgrade the BIOS with it, but some motherboards allow you to upgrade the BIOS without a processor, so just bear that in mind. So I think this is fascinating processor and I'm very impressed that AMD is going that route. Now, what I am excited about or kind of looking forward to is that what if they can cram the RDNA 2 processor inside this CPUs? Now, that would be impressive because the Vega graphics is still a little bit old and a little bit older graphics, but it will be interesting to see a six core processor with an RDNA 2 in there plus Ryzen 5000 series CPU, plus the RDNA2 GPU inside. Now that could be very, very interesting. But so far, these are the most powerful APUs in the market and the most powerful meaning for the GPU side because Intel is still very, very competitive with their uh, CPU side or just the computing power of the processor. What do you guys think? Would, is this processor something that you would have an eye on or would you be thinking, hmm, should I get it or should I not get it? If you want some gaming benchmarks, I'm gonna leave a video in the description over there if you, some of you are looking for the gaming uh, aspect of it. But there you go, there's the little conclusion of this CPU, very impressed with it, very interesting, very different. So if you want one of those, it's very hard to find, you just look eBay or whatever, but you just can't buy it off Amazon. Like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys for watching, bye bye.